Hey guys, it's Rachel from The Little Ring Lamb, and today I was going to film the intros and outros of this video, but I ran out of time. I need to get better organized with this, um, but I'm filming my July wrap-up, so I have all my books here. I'm going to try to make sure my camera's not shaking as much. I'm sorry if it's a bit shaky. Um, I read 12 books in the month of July, so I stayed consistent with my June reading. In this video, I'm also going to be discussing my reading rush wrap-up, so that is going to come when those books naturally come up. So the first book I read this month was Still Me by Jojo Moyes, which is the third book in the Me Before You trilogy. And I read the Me Before You trilogy, like, I read the first book, I think, shortly before, a few months before the second book came out. So it's been quite a while this had been on my shelf, and I was like, you know what, I just feel like completing a series and getting some books read on my shelf that hadn't yet read, been read. But I thought this book, I'm not going to get into really the plot, because it's a third book in the trilogy. But I thought this book was way better than the second book. I really, really enjoyed it. Actually, wait, no, I read 13 books this month. I'll get into that in a second. Sorry, because there's a short story in this. So I counted that in my reading goal. Um, but I found this book way better than the second book. I would say it's not as great as the first book, but it's pretty comparable. And I feel like I almost wish it was a duology and we can condense some of the second book and have the goodness of the third book. Um, Eli Eliza, why is I'm saying Eliza? Louisa um, was in New York City for this novel, so she was out of the locations that were prominent in the first and second books. So it also gave a different perspective and a different kind of analysis on her character, so to say. So I really enjoyed that one. And then in the book, there's a short story at the end of the book um, called Margot, which I read, and it was really good. It was about a character that you see in Still Me, and it was short and sweet, but I would love to see almost a book with that character as the main character. Then the next book I read was Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan, which is his newest book. Um, I read the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy, I believe, two years ago. Might have been three. Can't quite remember. But this book is basically a retelling of A Room with a View by E.M. Forrester. And it goes back in the past, so you see a little bit of, like, it flashes back and forth. And it's very close to A Room with a View, like in the sense where the plot kind of follows the same kind of progression, but it has a lot of twists. I really loved the characters in this novel. It feels like forever since I've read this, but the characters are really well formed. I definitely had a harder time getting into this one than I did the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy, but I still thought it was really good. I liked how the plot progressed, the ending, the characters. I think Kevin Kwan just makes very good characters and he makes them feel like they're real people. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this book. Um, I'm really looking forward to anything else Kevin Kwan puts out. Then after I read that, I didn't know reading Sex and Vanity that it was based on another novel. So I completely read it not knowing because um, I didn't do too much research before I picked it up. So then I decided since I already had this on my shelf, I was going to pick up A Room with a View by E.M. Forrester. I picked this up originally for a class for my first year of my university, my undergraduate degree. And I ended up dropping the class. Um, I didn't really like it too much. And the first semester was very old English and that. And to return the book would have gave me a dollar back. So I just kept some of the classic books. So I'm like, one day I might read them. So I read this one. Um, this edition wasn't even on Goodreads. So if you watch my progress on Goodreads, you wouldn't see this cover. So I just scanned the back of it and it came with a random cover. But I really love this edition. It's really pretty. And I have to say, I really enjoyed this. And I think it was easier for me to read this classic because sometimes I have problems reading classics because I, you know, I feel like sometimes the way they're written is hard for me to dive into them. But having read Sex and Vanity and kind of knowing the plot progression, it made it a bit easier for me to read this classic. And I have to say, it's very like interesting because some of the characters' names are the same in Sex and Vanity. And I really love the modern adaptation in Sex and Vanity, but it was also a good adaptation um, an adaptation, original book by E.M. Um, e. Forrester. I still haven't seen the movie adaptation. I believe it came on the 80s with Helena Bonham Carter. I hope I'm pronouncing that. I might be mixing up her name. Um, but I really want to see that one soon. Then the next book I read, I kind of took a detour and I read one of the YA books remaining on my shelf because I have a few. I haven't been buying really any new YA um, unless it's an offer I really, really love. So I decided to pick up one I wanted to pick up a while ago, but just never got to. I had this, this has been on my shelf for a few years now. Althea and Oliver by Christina Morocco. 
hope I'm not mispronouncing that. And this book is really interesting. So it's basically about um, a guy and a girl, Althea and Oliver. And Oliver has a sleep condition where he could be like walking and talking. Everything's fine. He falls asleep for long periods of time. So it could be a week. It could be a month. And Althea is his best friend who's kind of left behind in a sense because she he's asleep and they're like so codependent on each other and it kind of follows their relationship and their progression and how Oliver falling asleep so much has affected their friendship and I really enjoyed this book um it was also set in the 90s um I believe in North Carolina and because I watched like Dawson's Creek which I believe is also set in North Carolina if I'm not mistaken Wilmington which I think this book was also set in Wilmington um or they mentioned Wilmington a bit so it had those vibes and I really like I don't really mind 90s YA book, like YA books set in the 90s, but I really enjoyed this one. I ha thought I had a r lot of good elements. I've been really reading some books I've been really enjoying, so I've been really happy with that. So the next book I read was Inheritance, a memoir of genealogy, paternity, and love by Danny Shapiro. I've never read a Danny Shapiro book, but I've heard obviously the author's name. And this was basically the story about how she found out about her paternity and the journey that she went on being an adult. I believe she was in her 50s when she found out that um, her father wasn't her father. Well, like biologically, he's still her father, obviously. Um, and it was kind of the journey of finding that out, how to accept that, who's her father biologically, of course. And I really like this memoir. I really want to read more from her. Um, it was definitely a pretty quick read. Um, it was very interesting, um, especially like reading a book, not from like, I've read like, or seen movies of teenagers who find out like, oh, their parent isn't their biological parent. They're still their parent, obviously, and there's still the emotional connection. Um, but I haven't read anything from the perspective of somebody who is w later in life finding that out. So it's very fascinating. And I was really like, it's really awesome that she shared that because I'm sure other people have gone for this experience and it's nice to have a book out there that's like, not everything was rosy, here are some of the rosy stuff, here are some of the dark stuff, here are the emotions I was going through. And it also ties to religion. Um, so it was very interesting to read um, about that tie too and how it works within the confines so of the religion. So then I read Inheritance pretty fast because the reading rush was right around the corner. So I finished it on the Sunday. And the next five books are part of my reading rush wrap up. Um, and then after that, those five, I have two other books I read during the last part of July. So the first book I read during the reading rush was actually outlined by Rachel Cusk, which was a random one I found on Book Depository. I forget what I was looking up, but I just saw this cover and how striking it is with the text like across the bottom and that. And I was like, I've never heard of this author. I want to like, I want to try to find more authors that I haven't heard of necessarily. Um, maybe it's just because what I'm watching or what I'm looking up. And this book kind of remind me, like, if you love the Before Trilogy, which is a trilogy of films by Richard Linklater, which are literally my favorites, um, it kind of reminds me of that. So it's basically about an author, and we don't know very much about, is she an author? Why am I completely forgetting what she did for a career? She's a novelist, yeah, so she's an author, just double checking, because I was like, I know she teaches a course about writing. I was like, is she an author? Um, but she's an author and she's going to Greece for the, a few weeks just to teach this writing course. And while she's there, it kind of outlines the people she meets. So we don't really know much about this author. We uncover little things, but we're mostly learning about the people she interacts with. And it's very much a character study. It's not a very plot driven novel. So if you love plot driven novels, this might not be your jam, but if you love exploring characters and the way people are, the way they are, I haven't tabbed this book. I have a few quotes I need to, before I put it back on the shelf tab. This book is actually the first book in a trilogy, which I just um, purchased the last two books because I really love this book. It's probably one of my favorites of this year. I'm a person who loves just exploring characters and motivations for people. I find it extremely interesting. And this book just follows her teaching that course. I'm not really sure where the second one picks up. I haven't got too far into looking in. Like I kind of read it a while back after I finished this, but I completely forget because I try to forget the summaries so I can just go in blindly. So that was my first book for the reading rush. My second book, so that um, counted as my birthstone color, I believe, um, because of the red and my birth month is July and my stone is ruby. So that's how that was. The next was the watching a TV show, I uh, know, watching a movie and then reading the book. 
since I didn't have any of those on my shelf, I took a TV show I've kind of seen. I'm currently watching the fourth season. I haven't seen all of it yet, but I did a TV show instead of a movie, even though I'm not finished the TV show, but I read Sex and the City by Candace Bushnell, which I've had on my shelf for a while. And this was okay. Like, if you like the TV show, I don't think this is essential reading because it is more little scraps. Like, you can see how the TV show is built and see certain plots, especially in the earlier, like, I'm only in the fourth season. But especially in the earlier seasons, like seasons one and two, you can definitely see where certain things were lifted. But if you're, like, a super fan, it might be interesting to read it and compare it to. But I think if you're, like, for me, if I was looking back, I wouldn't find this essential to read. Like, it was a fun and entertaining read. But you can also tell it's kind of, it is written in the 90s and obviously you know not that there's stark differences but it's interesting reading about you know life in new york city dating all the world um in the 90s then the third book i read for the book tubafon was classified as i think the book i first touched so i got a package of books and this was the first one that rolled out and it was mr salary by um mr salary i was gonna say by mr rooney i was like huh um by sally rooney totally mix up that title there and this book is extremely short it's a little short story and it's basically about a girl and she is so one of her she kind of gets set up to live with this man who's related to her by I don't know if he's fully related to her it's like a relation through marriage but he's not biologically related to her um and it's not like always oh, a cousin he's like a wife's brother of like extended or something like down the line and she lives with him and it's kind of her kind of what's happening in her life during that time not during that time but like aftermath of that time and dealing with him it's hard to explain a short story without giving it all away really um and then the second last book i read for the book tube i forget what this book would count for if you watch my tbr you'll see I know this wasn't in my TBR. I forget what this book counted for. But anyway, I read The Singles Game by Lauren Weisberger, which I've had on my shelf for a while. It's the only Lauren Weisberger book I have on my shelf that I haven't read. I've read The Devil Wears Prada trilogy. Um, I consider it a trilogy. I know the first two. It's more of a duology and then a bonus book, but whatever. <laughs> and this book was really interesting. It was about a girl. I'm forgetting her name right now because when I read books, like sometimes I just forget their like, characters' names. Charlotte, who they call Charlie Silver. And she's a professional tennis player and it kind of follows her journey um, to become the best of the best. And it follows her personal life, her love life, her work life. And it's very tennis focused, which I really enjoyed um, because I used not obviously to a, sorry, I was just like, ooh, that texture. <laughs> um, I used to play tennis just for fun and I always liked it. I really wished I would have been able to play it more but it's hard when you don't have anybody to play with um because your siblings are like I don't want to play it anymore so that yeah, but I really enjoyed it so I enjoyed it like reading about it it was nice um this book was like not the most amazing book I've ever read in my life I feel like the Devil Wears Prada series was definitely better in my mind especially after reading um When Life Gives You Lululemons which is the third book I really enjoyed that this book was published before that third one I believe um but it was still a pretty good read. Like, it still was entertaining and it still had, like, the same kind of work vibes as Devil Wears Prada has in the sense where this person's working really hard. Like, Lauren Weisberger writes really good books about people and their work ethics. Like, insane. Then the next book I read was The Secret History of Twin Peaks. This is the last book I read for the readathon. And I started before the readathon. That's where I was going with that. And this book, if you open it up, it's like text, like there's all different documents and it's basically like a dossier. And this is by Mark Frost, who's one of the, is the co-creator of the TV show Twin Peaks. I've now watched seasons one and two, Fire Walk With Me and the Revival series. Um, the only thing I haven't seen is the 90 minute cut on the DVD of Fire Walk With Me, but I just received that in the mail today. Um, Cause it's one of the ones I ordered in a sale after my birthday and I really enjoyed this I think if you like the tv show Twin Peaks this is definitely worth reading it gives you a lot of insight and backstory and just stuff that's happened the characters especially they suggest you read this one before you watch the revival I was reading it while I was watching the revival just because of how timing worked out but it's really good if you read the if you've watched the show I definitely consider giving these a read they're very well made books too and they look really beautiful like even the spines are like really stunning 
And if you've read or if you've seen the show Twin Peaks or read this book, definitely let me know because I definitely want somebody to talk to it about because nobody in my life has watched Twin Peaks. Probably because it came out before most of my friends were born because we were all born pretty much the same year around then. Um, so that could do it. Then I read Twin Peaks, The Final Dossier by Mark Frost. And I think I, I started this as my last book in the book too, Buffon, but I, I mean the reading rush. If I keep calling it the book too, Buffon, I'm so sorry. It's just habit. Um, but read this one as my last book, didn't finish it, finished it afterwards, but this was the final dossier. So this one's meant to be read after the revival series. And it's kind of like this, it's very different in the sense where it's like, they have some pictures there, but it's like, where is it? Like file folder. So it'd be like Wyndham Earl. And it talks about each character, well, not each character, but a few select characters. And I found that very interesting as a companion after watching the TV show. Then the last book I read out in July on the last day of, well, I finished on the last day of July, was Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I've now read all of Sally Rooney's books. And I'm distraught because I really love her books. And now I have to wait till something else gets published. I was trying to find more of her, like, other works. So I know she's written magazine articles and stuff. Maybe I wasn't very proficient with finding them. But if you know of any of her magazine clippings and can send links to me, I'd really appreciate that. Um, but this book was basically about two best friends who kind of get entangled with a married couple and their lives kind of converge in really weird ways, but it's really interesting. And I like, this is one of my favorite books of the year too. Like I absolutely love Sally Rooney's writing now. It was definitely a character study, just like if you've read normal people or seen the show, it was just very, very fascinating. And I really, really loved it. Um, I'm not really doing great plot synopsis because I don't want to spoil it, but I think this one's definitely worth a read. I don't know whether I liked it more than normal people or just the same, but it's, yeah, definitely worth a read. I definitely consider picking it up. And yeah, those were all the books I read. Now we can see them over there. <laughs> My dinosaur. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely let me know what you read in the month of July. If you posted a wrap up or even a wrap up on Bookstagram, let me know. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.